will not soon be forgotten. We feel his loss, but his choice to follow that path will be forever inspirational in our community. As for DeRozier's memorial, the Kelso police chief says the details are still being worked out and it will likely take place sometime next week. We are going to continue to cover the death of Deputy DeRozier as he's honored throughout the coming weeks. Stick with COIN 6 for all of your coverage. We'll have more today starting at 4. And go to COIN.com to see more, including details on the suspects arrested in his death. A four-year-old boy is in the hospital, seriously hurt after a fall from a second-story window at his home. The boy fell yesterday from the window in the home in Bethany. Firefighters tell us he leaned against the window screen and fell, hitting the concrete below. Neighbor Rashad Fields heard what happened and rushed to try to help. You hear him crying. I go and hit my neighbor's fence. He's in the cocoon, Ball State. I pick him up as if he was my own kid, because I have kids, and I proceeded to just cradle him and just, like, try to make sure he's all right. First responders say they see quite a few children falling from windows in the spring and summer months, and they remind you to block your windows from opening more than four inches. A new at noon, the man accused of murdering another man in downtown Portland earlier this month has pleaded not guilty. Daniel Connor is accused of killing Paul Mears. Mears was found dead on Southwest Broadway in Alder just after midnight last week. Officials say he'd been stabbed to death. The woman who encouraged her boyfriend to run over a black teenager in Gresham has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. Colleen Hunt was sentenced yesterday in the death of Larnell Bruce. She pleaded guilty to manslaughter. She was in the car when her boyfriend, Russell Courtier, ran over Bruce outside of Gresham 7 Eleven in 2016. Courtier was sentenced to life in prison. Well, parents are scrambling to change their summer plans today after Portland Public Schools pushed back the last day of school again. The last day of school will now be June 12th. It's because of a teacher walkout that's scheduled on May 8th, so the district decided to cancel school. The district had already pushed back the end of school because of snow days. And we have reached out to other area school districts about their plans for the walkout. They all say they are still working on their plans. Well, new at noon, Garth Brooks is coming back to Oregon. He'll do a show at Autzen Stadium in Eugene on June 29th, and tickets go on sale April 26th. This will be his first show in Eugene. He hasn't done a show in Oregon in four years. Tickets are about $95 after fees, and there's an eight-ticket limit for each individual buyer. I was at one of those shows when he was here last time. It was pretty amazing. He's a pretty good performer. All right, I want to take a look at your forecast right now. And, Kelly, it doesn't seem too bad outside. Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. We're in the upper 50s now. We're still keeping it pretty cloudy out there, but I think we'll get maybe some breaks in those clouds going into today. And a short break from that rain, the rest of tonight through Thursday will likely stay dry out there. The rain returns for us into Friday, though. However, we'll be dealing with some warmer temperatures going into Thursday first. So take a look at this temperature trend. Today we should end in the low to mid 60s and by tomorrow the low 70s. So that'll be about 10 degrees above the normal temperature and we stay right about average as we head towards the weekend. Easter on Sunday mid 60s not bad and we'll see dry conditions once again over the weekend too. So a good enough uh, holiday to take your celebrations outside maybe for an Easter egg hunt with the Easter bunny out there. In the upper 50s now but still pretty cloudy out to further down the valley near Rose in southern Oregon, we're seeing that sun, and same for Bend in central Oregon. And the Dalles, we're getting those breaks in the clouds. So some areas are much drier and more sunny, but here we're getting socked in with clouds. I think we'll see decreasing clouds a bit and some sun breaks by the evening time. Temperatures today once again ending in the low 60s. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Kelly. Well, four people in Washington have gotten sick because of a salmonella outbreak that's affected several states. Health officials say that salmonella came from frozen ground raw tuna supplied by. Jensen Tuna, that's a company in Louisiana. Well, that tuna was distributed to seven states, including Washington, but not Oregon. It may have been used to make tuna sushi at restaurants. Four people in Washington got sick. None of them were hospitalized. It is Pizza Week in Portland, the Portland Mercury's annual celebration of pizza. And when it comes to what you can put on a pizza, only your imagination is the limit. Our Cor Harlan spent the morning at straight from New York's new location at 37th and Hawthorne, where Cor and the pizza maker made up the featured pizza of the week, the Hawaii 503. 
It's a teriyaki sauce base topped with mozzarella cheese, fried spam, grilled pineapple, chopped green onion, sesame seeds, and just a hint of seaweed for some saltiness. This is the fourth annual Portland Pizza Week. Slices are usually about $2 a piece at participating restaurants. So go to coin.com for a link to the list of all the pizza places taking part in this year's Portland Pizza Week. Also on coin.com, meet the Portland man who makes it his mission to eat every single slice of Pizza Week pizza. That's 45 <laughs> slices of pizza in only five days. See how he's able to do it on coin.com right now. He looks pretty thin, too, so I'm, I'm surprised yes. he can do all that. Yeah, yeah. but that's a goal. You yeah. know, he wants to eat all 45 special slices. It's a goal of mine to eat that much piece and, and look as good as that guy does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, today a local U.S. Marine veteran is celebrating his 98th birthday. He's a survivor of three World War II invasions in the Pacific, and he eats oatmeal for breakfast. As Cora Harlan shows us, he spent his birthday the way many of his days are, the 24-hour fitness in Gladstone. On the treadmill at Gladstone's 24-hour fitness is Fred Lawrence doing what he has done three times a week since 1971, working out. He celebrates his 98th birthday today by following a pretty standard routine of oatmeal for breakfast, onto the gym for 20 minutes on the treadmill, upper body weights and core exercise to keep his body strong. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel like I'm strengthening what's here. Fred's workout partner is Jeremy Yabara. Fred gets a lot of help from Jeremy around the gym, but it turns out Jeremy gets just as much out of Fred as Fred gets out of Jeremy. I just like to be like Fred when I grow up. I mean, to be his age and still be here, it's quite, it's quite the feat. Fred is a Marine who survived several major invasions in the Pacific during World War II. He says every day is a gift from the Lord, and he is not of a mind to squander them. I'll receive it as a gift, and I'll live it as he gives it to me. I'm not trying to make it any longer or any shorter. In his own quiet way, Fred Lawrence is an inspiration to the rest of us to live each day just a little bit better, an inspiration to enjoy the company of other people more, an inspiration even to eat more oatmeal. He's one of the last of the World War II generation, devoted to the Lord and to the many friends around him here at 24 Hour Fitness in Gladstone. Cor Harlan, Coin 6 News. That is incredible. 98 years old, too. Yeah, maybe we yeah. should put down the pizza and pick up the oatmeal. The oatmeal? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're probably right.